Hey everybody, welcome back to another Volition stream. Uh, I'm Josh Stinson, the video editor here at Volition and stream czar, stream producer, whatever. Uh, today on the couch, we got a new guest. Introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Shashank. I'm a new environment artist here, and I joined recently, uh, one month ago. I'm super excited to be here. All right, cool. And uh, over in the corner, as usual, in the, the, the little control corner, we got Mike uh, moderating the chat, controlling the stream, doing a lot of stuff. Thanks, Mike. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's last week we played uh, a lot more Kingdom Hearts 3 than I thought we were going to play. Uh, but after doing that, it's time to go back to doing some dev talks. Um, kind of talking to different developers uh, in the studio, seeing you know where they're from, how they got here, how they got into the games industry and all that. So, I mean, yeah, I guess just to start off, like, how did you, was your goal to be in the games industry? Uh, no. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I used mean, to play games for the beginning, like, from 1997, I got my first computer. Okay. But I was more into, like, anime and cartoons. Okay. So I was into art, but I was not sure I would be working in video games. Right. So my focus was to be good at art, drawing, and telling stories. Mm -hmm. But after playing Half-Life in 1999, okay. that time I was like, okay, you can tell stories through video games, too. And yeah. I play all the time. So that's a good combination. Okay. So, so, so Half Life was the big one for you for for realizing. Half Life was first FPS game I played. Okay. Yeah. Then I played Doom. The day after that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Going but, backwards, but that's fine. But I played the first game, 3D game. Actual 3D game was Wolf 3D. Oh, okay. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Wolfenstein. Yeah. And uh, Wolfenstein and even D Descent. From, oh, okay. Yeah. One of, I, one I was of, not aware. Like <laughs> Volition did that. <laughs> yeah. I got it from my cousin, uh, he was like six, seven years older than me, and he used to get those uh, IT, uh, like not IT, like some magazines. Oh yeah. And in the end, they used to get like a, a CD with demos of oh, the, yeah, the demo software. discs, yep. And he used to never share with us for some reason. Huh. So we have to wait for him to leave, then we'll go upstairs and steal it. Oh, and come downstairs and install all the games. Yeah. And that's how I got like Descent and Half-Life, Half-Life demos, Uplink and everything. Oh man. Yeah. That's Those cool. were like, like, oh man, you can actually go 3D. What? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that was like, there were three missions I think we just played all the time. Yeah. It was, I had some of those shareware things as a kid too, where it was just like, like, there was one, I don't know if you ever played Deus Ex on the PC. Oh, I, I missed it, actually. Oh, okay. I, I heard about it, but I was like such a fanboy of half I was like, no game is better than half Yeah. My friend was like, no, it's really good, you should try. <laughs> I was like, you know, I have to finish this first. Because there, there is like some demo or shareware style thing in that game that was like really long. It was like, oh, yeah. it was like two hours or something. Like you could really oh, get demo? a demo. Yeah, you could oh, get okay. a, like a lot of time out of the demo of that thing. Right. That was like a thing. I just had the disc and like, yeah. You know, couldn't afford the game as a kid, oh, so yeah. I just play that over and over and over. So like Same I know game. that I played through the rest of that game like once in the first part, maybe like twenty times. Oh wow! But yeah, yeah I mean that's kind of a um, ha, ha, you know you're not getting into the games industry like that, not being like your goal, and still kind of ending up in it is like oh yeah, no, it's my a, goal changed like very fast. Yeah, and I mean that's like a good games. Yeah, that's like. I feel like that's a, a kind of a common answer from when we've talked to other people yeah. like on these streams. It's like, you know, I wasn't really aiming to be in the games industry and it's just like, oops, I'm here now. I actually, like, when I was 10 years old, mm -hmm. like, I was pretty sure when I got the computer. Like, I know I have to do something with art, like animation or something. Yeah. But when games came out and I saw, like, there's a story, like, you can t actually tell a story without saying a single word. Right. Then I was like, okay, I have to do something. This is a good medium. Yeah. Just, I mean, story is story. It doesn't matter if you shoot it with real people. Or animate, or mm -hmm. play the game. Uh, so how did you like? How did you get into like? Were you even before doing any like three uh, D modeling or stuff? Were yeah. you just like into drawing? Yes. Okay. So, like me, my brother, and like our cousins, like we used to draw like all the time, like Dragon Ball Z characters, oh, Batman, yeah. ninety uh, the animated series from nineties. Oh, yeah. So there was no internet. I mean, for us, at least, we got it in around, like, 97, I think, uh -huh. in my house. I okay. So whenever, like, there's a, they used to, uh, on Sunday, we used to get, like, a newspaper, and it has, like, like cartoons, pictures, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we used to just sit together and draw all the time. 
And nice. then my uncle, like he moved to US mm-hmm. for studies and stuff. And so my mom used to say, you know what, instead of buying a card and mailing them, you should draw your drawing, like draw the card and send yeah. that. I was like, okay. So we didn't draw anything like, like thank you or like have a great year or something. <laughs> we just right. used to draw cartoons what we like Dragon Ball <laughs> and stuff. So that became a habit like every year on before their birthday <clears throat> and like any New Year, Christmas mm-hmm. or even our like uh, art, festival, art festivals. We used to just sit together and draw for like two, three days or something and just, okay, done. Yeah. But that habit was really like, I think that started the art thing. I mean, that sounds like a <clears throat> a good habit to like build up early on because like, yeah. I, I used to draw a lot. I don't do oh. it much anymore. And I was originally somebody who wanted to be like an artist for something. Yeah. Back, back in the 90s, it was just like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to be like a comic book artist or something. <laughs> but like being able to instill that habit of like drawing all mm-hmm. the time is yeah. like super helpful early on because that was one of my issues when it was like oh I'm going to be like a graphic designer and illustrator it's just like I don't want to draw though (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, it's very time consuming that's true yeah for sure Um, but I actually worked in comics too oh really yeah but I worked with a there's an Indian comic artist I worked with him Mm -hmm. and his client was in uh, US oh okay so it was like Seattle based some studio and he used to get and that time I was like really into, I was not getting into, I was not focusing into video games because I was like going back and forth. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I have to tell a story. So I need to focus on sto- uh, like, uh, like a storyboarding mm-hmm. or comics and stuff. Yeah. And I like, I like drawing and my family was supporting me. Supporting me like, okay, you can do whatever you want to do yeah, yeah. in <laughs> India. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, they, no, they helped me a lot. That's why I'm here. Okay. But cool. yeah, that was really cool. Uh, so when, when did you decide that you want to do like 3D modeling? Like, yeah, 3D. I started actually by accident. Okay. Because I want to get into th- like video games, like I told you, but there was no schools available or any like a, like a platform, like a, mm. like you know, private entity that can teach you. Like you have no one here or something. We had in India, but if you go there, they were like more focused on animation. Okay. So there was no gaming, any like learning curve or any platform to learn like game development. Right. So I went to couple and I tried, but I left the schools as mm-hmm. I don't want to waste my time here. Okay. Because the instructors don't know. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was like 2007, 2005. Okay. And it was not good. So I joined a studio as a graphic designer, mm-hmm. and they were doing 3D stuff too. Uh, okay. It was like advertising. And so I asked them, like, I'll do, th- I'll do the graphic design, but I really want to work on 3D. Yeah. So can you also teach me, like, some 3D stuff? <laughs> like, I'll stay there. Yeah. And I learned through that, like, 3ds Max and... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's kind of how it went for, like... I feel like a lot of people kind of accidentally learn the skills that, like... Yeah. Is their career now, like... Oh, yeah. I, a lot of the time doesn't feel like planned yeah <laughs> i actually one of them i forgot like to mention this but uh-huh. i was actually going for hardcore drawing but the reason uh-huh. i joined 3d because <laughs> i was not fin- like financially it was not good like drawing thing it, it was not working out yeah so i tried like six seven months i was like oh it's gonna take a lot of time <laughs> mm-hmm. and people will be starting like you know starting to ask me questions about okay what's your plan this is not working for sure but you enjoy it yeah so 3D was still like in advertising. There were jobs and they were good. Okay. Um, so you said you've been working because, like, I was like, oh, I got to get him on stream be- just because it's like we got a bunch of you know some new hires yeah. recently. Uh, you were one of them. Just like, and Mike told me like specifically that you did. You worked on some previous games. Yes. Uh, making some assets, uh, including like one or two that are like games I really like. So I'm oh, just like, oh, I got to have him on stream. Yes. So, uh, but. Yeah, before working here, uh, did you work? You worked on other games. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> before I moved to US, I moved here in 2014. Okay. So I was working in a uh, outsourcing house, uh, mm. Luxury Digital. They make their own games too. Okay. But they also provide 3D production support and like art, like to other studios. Right. And they're like really big in India. So I was trying to get there. Like, I actually tried, like, for one and a half year. I was, like, applying. Mm-hmm. I said, like, okay, my portfolio is not good enough right now. 
because I was like learning on my own, like right. from 3D Motive and Eat 3D. Those are like like pretty old websites now. Yeah. So buying tutorial from there and doing that, and so luckily I got a call from there, mm-hmm. and they said okay, work. They I'll give the test and everything, and uh, so the, then they were like assigning like okay, there are four people, four new hires, so we'll assign people to the projects, and yeah. I was like got into Metal Gear Solid 5, Phantom Pain. Yeah, like, that's what? the one. That's yeah, the one that's I really the like. One. I, was, I, was like, I was like, what? It's the same game there? What? There's another Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. And that was the first game I worked on as a, like I supported a oh, prop wow. and materials, okay. tileable textures. But it was, uh, the project was almost over. So I worked mm-hmm. on it like three to four months. Okay. Yeah, but it was really awesome. Like Man. the learning curves, like the time, the efficiency of like you learn so fast in the studio. Yeah. I think what I learned there in three months, I think it could have taken me a year to learn. Oh wow. On my own. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say like especially like if you're a person creating some type of asset for games that like working for a place that does a lot of outsourcing oh, yeah. is probably like a incredibly like useful it's, like crash course on like how to do it's, that. It's really it's like a crash course plus you work with so many studios, like so different projects. Oh, right. So yeah. different pipelines. And like different softwares, because some studios prefer these software, some studios prefer these software. Mm-hmm. So you have to switch. And I was focusing on Max, 3 d Max. Yeah. But all the projects I worked on were on Maya. <laughs> oh no. Like, oh man. <laughs> Maya. Yeah. But the team was really good, and they helped me out. And I know nice. Maya a little bit. I, I did, I mean, even in advertising, yeah. they were using Maya. Okay. But 3 d Max was in my head, like, whenever I search online, well, three D Max is for games. Maya is for. I mean, okay. it's a myth. I mean, it doesn't matter. Mm. But, <clears throat> but yeah. So that helped me a lot, actually. I still use those skills, like yeah. those, because they are like hardcore tested, <laughs> 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 like in ev- from every angle. Yeah. So that helps uh, a lot. M- Mike sent me a message saying, "You have a good story about a vent on the back of a fridge." Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is this about? <laughs> no, I. It was a model, like an yeah. asset I have to create, and uh, so the perfection, like it was good, but it was kind of a like, I was like really a little frustrated too, because mm-hmm. it was new for me. But yeah. that was the right approach. So I have to change my attitude and work on it. But the thing was like, if you're baking. Uh, for example, like 3D, if you're making from baking stuff from high poly to low poly. Mm-hmm. So the thing was, you, if there's small artifacts and stuff, you can clear it out in Photoshop. Right. It's not a big thing. Right. But the thing was like, we were like following a good practice, but it's like, if there's any mistake, mm-hmm. so you have to bake everything again. And it's, like, prob- it's probably like a really long slow it's like process, a right? Time consuming. Yeah. But it was a good practice. It's te- it taught me, like, you know, these are the protocols you have to follow. Mm-hmm. These are the things you have to check before you start to bake and everything. But now, it's like because of that, right now, I just, okay, this thing, this thing, this thing, everything is matching. Uh-huh. And then, so I don't have to waste time right now. Yeah. But that time, I felt like, why? Why I have to bake everything again? <laughs> like, no, it's going to take like 30, 20 minutes to do everything. I can yeah. just go to Photoshop, selection, uh, uh, what is the content? I forgot, it's like shortcut key. Control F5. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, is it um, content? Content aware? Con- <laughs> content aware, yeah. Yeah, the, the thing that kind of just. It's magic. <laughs> yeah, it, it tries to. Uh, make something new based on the surroundings yeah. of the image, so it tries to naturally fill in the gap fill the that gap. doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. It's so good. I mean, so we kind of do that. We have to, if there's an artifact, you have to go back in high poly mm-hmm. and just fix there, and then you put it in low poly, you have to import, export again. Yeah. And if it's like a big asset, mm-hmm. then like it will take like, you know, a couple of minutes, and it builds up like each minute, like adds up into like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And sometimes you are like little tired because you're working from eight hours or something. And then sometimes you type the wrong name. It's like, oh man, I have to go back. I have to import it. Again. <laughs> so it's all becomes like, oh, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to make a mistake. So, but yeah, uh, it was like a. Mike also is is bringing up so that that part that you were like working on painstakingly. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but yeah, those were like it was a requirement from the client, so you have to follow. Yeah. But as a person, like when you're making that thing, you're like, oh, man, it's in the backside of the corner. Like no one's gonna see. No that. one's gonna notice it. Yeah. But you have to do it because it's the requirement. I mean, you're getting paid for that. So, right. Slowly, slowly, your attitude changes. You start think, uh, start thinking from like client perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want it, so you have to do it. But as like my first two, three months in the industry, I was like working on Metal Gear Solid. So yeah, I was like super excited. Ah, I don't care. I was like twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing was like when you work, but when you're actually doing the like you know baking and everything, mm -hmm. and you see stuff, I was like what? This is the feedback. Yeah. But, like, yes, that is the feedback. And so, you have to address it. So that, that fridge that you worked on with the, the vent that no one could see because it was up against a wall, was that, was that for Metal Gear or was that for yeah, something else? Those for that, I mean, yeah. I mean, that was from, I heard stories from other people too, but mm -hmm. the one I did, it was from, like, the personal project of the studio. Oh, uh, okay. So what they were doing, they were uh, taking uh, the practice, good practices from all the projects, mm -hmm. and they were implementing to other artists too. Mm, okay. So it become, because I, I worked more on like tileable textures mm -hmm. and some assets, some 3D props. Okay. But most of the stuff when I came, so I, like I told you, I only worked like three or four months in that, in that project. Right. So, but they were training, like when we were done, so we, we, our job was to like teach other people mm -hmm. and other people like slowly and slowly. So all the artists stand like, uh, quality of work and the output should be same otherwise yeah. you because we were not using substance painter because mm. it's, it's not like oh metal I can just drag and drop so we were doing in Photoshop okay so oh boy yes that so. seems a lot <laughs> that seems a lot harder just making textures in yeah. Photoshop and not being able to like yeah yeah so <laughs> it's like a cube small fridge or some like a drawer or something yeah and that will have like 62 layers 52 layers in Photoshop. Oh, Cause man. Because that time they were uh, like, I mean, I'm lucky that I was there at that time. Yeah. Because they were teaching like uh, non-destructive way of texturing. Okay, yeah. So each thing, like if you want to put like a metal or something, so you put just uh, color, solid color. Mm -hmm. Then you find a texture from online or from the library. Yeah. And you make it tileable. Okay. And then you use it as a mask. Oh, okay. And then that's one layer. So you will do the diffuse map first. And once that is done, then you copy the whole folder. Yeah. And each crack and each texture has its own folder. Oh, jeez. And then you have to copy all that stuff and make specular map. <laughs> that sounds... Uh, I'm a person who isn't the greatest with Photoshop, like organizing my Photoshop layers when I have to do that stuff. So it's like, I'm just imagining all the folders and like, oh, yeah. how do I label all these layers? But I mean... This is something we'll show in a little bit because we have some of your like work you've done in the past to yeah. show off later. Um, but talking about like the the diffuse map and stuff, I believe you have a couple of things that show like the different layers. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. So that because we we've talked about this <clears throat> type of stuff before, like what goes into textures and all that in the past. Mm -hmm. But we haven't had too many visual examples of like here's a diffuse map, here's like uh, yeah. like bump I mean, map or whatever, and like all not, those. It's not even called like diffuse. Like I don't know, like albedo, albedo, oh, like albedo same color, yeah. base color in Photoshop in Substance Painter. It's a base map, base color map. Okay. So it depends. Base color, albedo, diffuse. Yeah. Is that a, an issue when you're working with this type of stuff and you're using different software? They have different terminology for the same thing? I mean, not now. Not Used now? To. Used yeah. to? Okay. Used to. But it's like, it's, the main thing is like the color map should only have color information. No shadows, no highlights. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, handled by roughness and metallic and the actual lighting, mm -hmm. the material shader in okay. the engine. So this is just like a guideline for a shader so that it can create this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in fact, actually, how about we switch over to this computer screen over here so we can take a look at, at some of your work, because I, I have some questions about yes. uh, textures and all that. Uh, specifically, like, uh, oh, and you have the mouse if you want to show oh. off a specific thing here. Um, you, you can let me know. Uh, one question I have, if you, is there something you have here that just sh is showing you, like, just a texture that you made oh, here? Oh, yeah, these are all... Okay. <clears throat> you can actually go here, drop some material. Um, because I'm really curious, uh, like, how do you make a texture, like, tileable? Oh, okay. 
I mean, nowadays there's so much resources available. Okay. Again, like because I was imagining in the past it was probably more yeah. handcrafted work of yeah. making something loop, but now I'm guessing it's probably a little easier to, to do yeah, that. Yeah. Nowadays, because of like substance designer, mm -hmm. you can. It's like a Photoshop with node based system. Okay. It's like every lay, every function mm -hmm. is node. So, for example, if you want to put level in Photoshop. You go down there and click and level. Yeah, you put like a level layer, filter, right? adjustment layer on top of stuff. So Substance Design is exactly Photoshop. Yeah. How I understand, mm -hmm. every function, every layer, every every step you do in Photoshop is a node in Substance Design. Okay. That's I all. believe you have something else here that actually shows oh, yeah, a node yeah. graph, right? Oh, I would, yeah. I would love to. Uh... Yeah, this, this one. Oh, yeah. So this is Substance Designer. So if I, can, I can't zoom, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I tried zooming in earlier, but I couldn't. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, it's not gonna work. You have yeah. to download the image. I think then. You I mean, can actually, if you right click and say "Open a new tab," we might be able to get that here. I'll give you the, your tabs back. Might be able to zoom in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll make this full screen again here. Yeah. So, for this asset, I actually can I go back again? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, Sorry. Here, I'll just, I'll yeah. just keep it like this. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So this was the base for this. Okay. So. Uh, Nowadays, I try to stay away from ZBrush. Mm -hmm. It's not like I don't like it, or it's just like I don't need it nowadays because there's so much right. resources available already. Okay. Unless I want specific, but this is the base that you make. Like a tallable texture can be created in ZBrush. You can make a, a base first, mm -hmm. and these stones, like this, all this layer and this layer, like horizontal, is yeah. copied here, and this oh. is copied here. So this vertical is copied here. Okay. So if you see this stone and oh, this stone, right yeah. same. This and this is same. You can see there is a thing coming, a twig coming up, but it's going to cut here. Okay. So it doesn't matter. So the twig will be rendered. Even on the top, if you see this and this stone is similar, ah. this and this stone is similar. But uh, so you, depends on like how you're going to approach, how you want to approach. Because some things, I think Substance Designer, like creating very organic stuff mm -hmm. can take some time right. and it may it more focus on like ran, uh, randomization like if you just want to make like a stone and people can create I did that in the past too mm -hmm. that you can create a, a stone generator so it's more like a alpha plus like a height map of a stone okay. and it has you can add parameter to cut the shape and create variation mm. and then you can just throw it into tile generator and then you can randomize there. But it's more like you don't have like control over right. it on a single stone. And sometimes uh -huh. you don't want it, but sometimes you want it to okay. create a unique stuff. So I did that based in like, maybe I create one stone in 3ds Max or Maya and then bring it in um, ZBrush and then you can just give, just look at a reference and try to give like, try to meet the medium overall shape of the stone. But if you zoom in here, there's no like, uh, like greens over it. Okay. Like there's no like a uh, surface information. Like yeah. it's, it's like smooth or like uh, scratches or something. All that done was in like in Substance Designer. Okay. All the surface detail, like there will be a folder for here. Uh, stone surface detail. Right. Like so small greens, like for example. If you come here, like all these noises. Yeah, all, all the little yeah, bumps the, the, and the, the bumps and textures and stuff, yeah. So all that is done in this folder. Oh, wow. So it's just actually tileable textures. Mm -hmm. And as you know, like uh, how game engine read is like black is down, white is up, or white is down, black is up. Yeah. So you just create like different patterns. Mm -hmm. And try to meet as close as to the reference you have. Okay. And uh, yeah, just do that. And the good thing about doing from uh, uh, what do you call it? from ZBrush is you get all the masks. So when you bake all these masks, so this is like AO ambient occlusion mm -hmm. and height map. Okay. And base normal map. So all this information can be bringing in Substance Designer. Oh, yeah, Substance Designer and. So these are the mask. Okay. So all four maps ma maps are here. Plus, I also make like a selection map. For example, I have stones. Oh, it's a better picture. 
So the stones, mm -hmm. ground, leaves, and the twigs, I can assign like red, blue, green, yellow. Yeah. And in Substance Designer, I can put those in like RGB alpha. Okay. Leaves. And then you then you don't have to worry about like oh it's bleeding to other area, it's bleeding to some other area. So if, if I want brown color, I'll just make a f uh, like stone surface detail. I'll put all that stuff and use a mask from here to here, and then it will only apply to this gray area. Okay, so you're kind of separating everything so that only certain things apply to... Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, it's very difficult to, because the only way you can tell is the stone, this is sand, is like, I mean, reflection helps too, but mm -hmm. how the surface property is. So, yeah. Man, I am always like blown away by anybody who has to do anything with node graphs, yeah. um, because I've messed with that a little bit, just uh -huh. like, you know, like when I wasn't working here, I did a little bit of work for a client in uh, Unreal Engine 4. Oh, nice. uh, it was mostly like sequencer, like cutscene stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I did, I did have to go and like to make some things happen, like do some node graph stuff. Mm. And I was just like, uh oh, <laughs> I don't know. Like even basic things, I was just like, I was starting to get it. But even after I got it, it was just like the organization. Yeah. Of all that stuff, like it feels like if we can go back to that image, oh, sure. like this is just for that texture. Yeah. All of this. And there's stuff like bleeding off the sides of the screen on the right, too. Yeah. Like that is a yeah. crazy amount of stuff to me. And like the idea of like, it feels like if you were like in a big rush and you weren't like organizing oh, that yeah. stuff, <laughs> you would like pay the price later and have to take like a whole work day just yeah. to organize. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. there, is there like, when you look at this, mm -hmm. are there still times where it's like, ah, oh, crap, where is that thing? I'm getting lost. Or, uh, like, can you just, like, no. see, like, the code of the matrix now and just no. <laughs> understand it? <laughs> no, it <laughs> no, it's not that complicated. Okay. Anyone who works in Substance Designer, yeah. I mean, they can read it. So that's why, okay. I, like, this is, like, the type of uh, effect I'm leaving on the texture. Mm -hmm. So you can just put, like, stone surface details. So anyone wants to edit the, like, uh, spots or scratch or something, it's all, all that information is here. Okay. So they still have to zoom in. And you use like certain nodes. So if you zoom in, you can tell by the node shape. Okay, this one is this one, this one is that one. Okay. So it's really it's really easy to read. Okay. I mean, if you're new, I mean, it takes some time. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. With practice, you get used to it. I mean, I'm looking at it now. I mean, yeah, but just the, just the, the boxes alone that are labeled, I do think yeah. makes this a lot more... Like immediately readable for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> anyone who works with textures or something. Yeah. Yeah, this is the whole purpose. Like, if they want to go something, like they want to change something, or you know, yeah, they can just do it. Um, yeah. yeah, you've got some some other work here I wanted yes. to ask you about. Uh, there was one specifically of, of like a uh, old room. Oh, I think oh, it's zoomed in a little. Okay, this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this one took me a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, this was, the, I mean, this is like the first thing I clicked on when yeah. you sent me this, just so I could look through before we, we did the yeah. stream. But I was like really impressed with this oh, one because it looks super you. nice. And also we have uh, feared symmetry in the chats uh, saying to let you know that they are very impressed with your stones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> but yeah, this one I was really struck by. Um, specifically the wallpaper? Yeah. The wallpaper so, and the ceiling, because I don't know, it just... Uh, I... Yeah. Ha, like, how much... Um, how much reference do you end up looking at for this stuff? Oh, I use... Like, like tons? Tons. I yeah. only use reference. Okay. I just, like, every material here, I try to meet as close to as possible mm -hmm. and replicate it. But yeah, I spent more time on the note thing you were talking about, mm -hmm. like material editor in Unreal. So that was the goal. Because I was thinking I'm not putting anything complicated here, yeah. like a very complex model. So I just want to show like the power of Unreal. Right. And texture and texture manipulation. So this is all vertex paint. So I created like a master material, which has like four textures in it. Mm -hmm. One is this crack. One is this yellow normal color, which is, and one is like dirt, and one is this concrete thing coming out. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, so I just blended like RGB and alpha, so you can mix four colors in it, mm -hmm. vertex painting. And same with the top one on the ceiling. But yeah, that was the main showcase, like composition and 
technical side of Unreal. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I created other models like guns or something to show like I can do model too. Okay. <laughs> so it is like pretty old now, but this was my thesis project from. Oh, okay. From my school, like Academy of Art University. Um, so you yeah. brought up the the vertex painting. I'm curious yeah. because I. Um, I've seen like uh, some assets and like behind the scenes stuff from mm -hmm. like really old games that I like yeah. when they had to do things a lot differently. Yeah. Is vertex painting the same th type of thing that was done for earlier games where instead of um, instead of like a model like Mario and Mario 64 having Ugh. like textures, they were just putting colors to each like vertice on his model, or is uh -huh. that a different thing? I am not sure, but I think what I've seen. They're actually just model. Okay. Because I have uh, worked on a project which was, I don't know if I can say it or not, but mm -hmm. it was pretty old, but still. <laughs> okay. So the way we did, like, like there were six pixels or maybe four pixels. Mm -hmm. And you have to use only four colors. Like, each pixel have each color. Oh, gosh. And then if you're making a Mickey Mouse, so you have red, mm -hmm. yellow, white, and black. Yeah. So, you make model really good, not high poly, like good enough. Yeah. And where you want white color, you take out the UVs and you put it on white pixel, like small. Oh. <laughs> and it's white. And if you want to make eyes or ears black, you model in a way like you cut the uh, black area and so you cut the area or model the area in a way where you want black color or white color or red okay. color. So maybe I think it was done that way. So okay. Texture size, I think takes more memory. Mm -hmm. I mean, depends on the engine, depend, depends on a lot of stuff. Right. But, yeah. So, I think, what I've seen, like, you, the Mario thing you're talking mm -hmm. about, I think it's just mainly solid colors. Okay. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, when, when you brought that term, it sounded like something I heard way in the yeah. past, but I wasn't entirely sure. Yeah. But, uh, what, so, one question I have is, um, like, when working with, with textures with, like, you know, current gen style stuff where like textures yeah. can be like way higher resolution than they could in the past. Yeah. Like, is that freeing for you or is that more like, I mean, uh, I, mean I know it's certainly more <laughs> complex, but is it nice to be able to kind of make something more much closer to what you actually want it to look like? I think now, yes. I mean, that gives us freedom, but I think now it's more about, it's give you, it gives you creative freedom. Yeah. And you're not bounded by technical stuff because you actually create everything in like 4K and then later on you can reduce it because okay. who knows where you want to use the texture. If you right. exactly know, because you can use, if you're making for a studio or something, then you can use that texture in next project or somewhere. Mm. So you always try to create like a larger size and right. then you can just reduce it if you want to. Okay. Like Unreal do that too in every engine as possible. But the question like you asked, I think it was, first it was like, oh, it's so cool. Now we don't have to worry about creating all the <laughs> textures. We just throw stuff. But now it's more about like telling a story through textures too. Okay. So if this sofa is in the stream room or maybe in a room where, a, abandoned room, mm -hmm. how can you tell this sofa is from abandoned room or like zombie apocalypse or something? Right, So yeah. you have to tell story through textures. Like how gotcha. old is this sofa? Otherwise you can just go to Substance Painter, took a leather, throw it on. <laughs> Put some mask area in there, done. Yeah. But now it's like, oh no, so it must be there. this area was flooded. So you have to make this area darker oh, and that effect it. It's fun. Like, it's really cool that yeah. you tell this stuff. But sometimes it's like, oh, you have only half day to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it never happened. Like, half day, I'm just exaggerating. But, yeah, yeah. But that kind of thing, like... We, we were thinking, oh, no, you just have to throw stuff and it will be great. Mm -hmm. and, but the thing was, like, computers can handle and consoles can also handle more memory and stuff. Yeah. So we are supposed to create more, like, heavy textures. Mm. So before, you just, you, you just put, like, some patches here and there and it's good enough. But right now, those patches should have greens in it. So okay. <laughs> that's all that thing, like, adds up and doesn't reduce the work. Yeah. It makes it fun, but it doesn't reduce the fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because <clears throat> it, it always seems like the trade-off with, like, every new generation is, like, there's new, like, more yeah. convenient tools that can automate more things for you, but yeah. at the same time, there's even more work for the detail that to, like, kind yeah. of counterbalance that. Um, I'm curious, have you ever, just for uh, 
like an exercise for a challenge, tried to make textures for like an old game, quote unquote. I did actually. Oh yeah, but it's not on my portfolio. Uh, that's a shame. I wish I could have thought of that earlier if you still had that stuff. Yeah, I could have brought it. Like, but yeah, I did that. Like a World of Warcraft, like hand painted. Oh wow. Like, so in our school, like, uh, are some classes that you have to start from the beginning. Like, how do you paint from like this Photoshop? That's all. Okay. No ZBrush, nothing. Right. And stylize, because they try to train you in every way. Mm -hmm. and, and it depends. Like, sometimes you can pick the course. But I was a graduate student, so I had the luxury that I was like, I don't want to work on that. I just want to work on the... Yeah. I enjoyed that, so... So that's why I did that. But I did, I did try. Like, one of the assignments was like, no, you have to work on a World of Warcraft style. Okay. Dialable texture, you have to create that. Mm -hmm. What was that what, like? It was like the same like, like the Lux, uh, the studio I was working in India. Yeah. Luxury Digital. So it was the same thing. Like okay. in Photoshop, you have to make dialable. <laughs> I was like, I'm used to this. I can do it. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That uh, was fun. Because yeah, I've always I've always been interested because I've seen other people like just random people portfolios like yeah. some people always do like some exercise of like well I'm gonna try and do like the way they did it like 20 years ago or something oh, or. Yeah. I saw somebody, um, I forget who it was, it was years ago, somebody did an exercise of trying to take all of the um, playable characters from Team Fortress 2 mm -hmm. and try to translate them to um, the limitations of the PlayStation 1 oh, and trying to cool. make them like have the same like readable like silhouettes and everything mm -hmm. despite having way less polys yeah. um, and way less texture budget. Um, yeah, how about we look at one of these, oh, yeah. one of these uh, weapons too? So yeah, are there ever times when, like you're, um, like you're making textures, and it's more convenient if you model a thing, like rather than having work with somebody else who is modeling a thing. Like if it's something small, mm -hmm. or I would rather do, like it depends. Mm -hmm. Like if you know the person, like like skill level and everything. Yeah. And sometimes you prefer things in a certain way. Okay. And it can be like it can throw you off. I mean, it's, it will take some time. Like maybe within like two, three assets, you'll be used to it. But yeah, I, I enjoy texturing. So okay. like I sometimes like hesitate to do not hesitate. I mean like UV part. Mm -hmm. So you have to do modeling. Modeling is fun. Mm -hmm. Then UV unwrap is like because you want to jump into Substance Painter and do texturing because you can tell just scratches yeah. and, and also all that fun stuff. Is, I don't think this has been explained before, but what is a UV for, for our viewers? So, I actually like have a really good way to explain this. So, okay. for example, like 3D model is just, for example, if this is a 3D model. Mm -hmm. So, UV is like, uh, just imagine there's foil, you have a foil, mm -hmm. and you have just wrapped foil over it. Okay. Like, completely sealed. Yeah. And then the so model will be gray in color. Mm -hmm. So just imagine if you cut out the foil and put it on the floor and you paint gray color, like this pattern and this thread and everything, oh. and then take the foil and put it back on the plate. <laughs> okay. So it's more like a foil on your 3D model mm. that you put texture on and then you put it back. It's okay. not exactly what I'm saying, but the concept is this. Like there's a thin layer. <laughs> okay. But I think... That way, like, if no one is aware, like, how, what is texturing? How do you do texturing? What is UV? What is 3D model? Mm -hmm. I think that is the best way because they know, okay, sofa is sofa. Mm -hmm. Foil is a foil. Just yeah. imagine it's gray in color and you just have to text, actual paint, leather, or whatever you want to paint and put it back on a, fo on a sofa. Okay. Then you say, oh, this sofa is textured. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Because yeah, that, that, that is one of the things that I've always... I've heard that term a lot, and I like yeah. kind of got it, but that's like the best explanation I've heard of that actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you were talking about like the UV wrap being difficult. Yeah. It's it's not difficult now, you know, but it's like it takes some time. Okay. Because the thing I was talking about, like baking stuff from high poly to low poly, mm -hmm. if your UVs are not baked, and depends on the asset too, but it's like a good practice if you have good UVs, mm -hmm. then you don't have to go back. Like, if there's any change or something, it can lead to a lot of artifacts or some uh -oh. baking. And sometimes if you just random UVs, then it can leave, like, a seam here. Seam is, like, so whenever you cut, uh, so the foil thing I was talking about. Yeah. So, for example, if you're doing UV this as, like, this sofa, 
So you have to give like seam here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the foil is here with one pack, no cut or nothing. So just make a cut here on this foil and then you take out this plane. Okay. And then cut this here and then take out this thing. So yeah. if you do it like it may take some time to fill up all the spaces, like you know, how you lay out the all the islands, all mm -hmm. the foil islands. But if you don't do it then like it can work sometime. But sometimes you will get some artifacts and then it's like a pain to go back, fix that. Yeah, and do go all back that over and yeah, it's like yeah. importing, exporting, importing, exporting. It takes yeah. so much time. Yeah. yeah, that sounds extremely important to try and get that yeah. like it's good important, yeah. from the get-go. But it's um, getting really good now, like in all the softwares now. You just, maybe if you do automatic, so yeah. it's like a projection from six side, four side, whatever you want to do. Mm. And it gives you decent enough result, so you can just modify it and okay. it's good to go. Um, curious also um, what specific tools it is that you use here, and like for texturing, um, do we does yeah. Volition have internal tools made for working with texturing? Uh, I, I, I think Substance Painter is okay. the standard right now. It's, okay, and it's really good actually. All right, I think yeah, but maybe if they, I'm actually not working with textures right now, so oh, gotcha. So we're just working with trim sheets. And okay, stuff, so. so yeah, in this model, I use 3ds Max. Mm -hmm. And ZBrush, and like a well, little bit Photoshop here and there, and Substance Painter. Okay. Yeah, this main focus was to show off like hard surface, like the complicated hard surface model, which is like kind of difficult to make. Mm -hmm. Like once you understand it, then it's good. Like otherwise, it has like artifacts. If the topology is not right, you will see st you start seeing some artifacts like stretching of. You yeah, the, like, the, the texture will get stretched and kind of like blurry in spots, kind um, of, or...? Texture, it will show up in texture too sometimes, but even if you bake this information on low poly, like low polygon, uh, like this one, so mm -hmm. this is low polygon. So this is actually just one, two, three, four, five, six polygons, whatever, like 10, okay. 7 polygons, but in high poly, it it will be like maybe I don't know maybe hundred thousand no, hundred thousand maybe I don't know okay how much like it's really a lot so each, yeah there are many so but if those uh, topology is not correct it's not smooth enough mm -hmm. it's gonna start creating artifacts okay so then then if you bake that stuff on low poly it will it's not gonna work this yeah. is your foundation right so it has to be perfect. Um. Something else I meant, meant to ask, because I've asked a yes. couple other people this, who started working at Volition at kind of different periods of the, yeah. the studio's history, uh, but you started very recently. Uh, yes. <laughs> so when you interviewed here, yes. um, talking in vague terms, just in case there's like top oh, yeah. secret stuff happening, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, you had to do an art test, right? I actually, no. No? Yeah. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. I was lucky. <laughs> huh. All right. No, I was working in a different studio. I was working in a, a VR studio. It's called, uh, its name is Weaver. Okay. It's in LA. And it's like really good. Like, well, I would say one of the best VR studios available right now. Like okay. working on. And I was ready for the art test. I mean, because you have to do it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. How, where you're working or how much experience you have. Yeah. I was all set for it, but luckily I was not. Oh, asked. man. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> So that was awesome. I okay. had to do a, a video editing test when I started here oh, forever no. ago. But. Believe me, I did all the tests. Like, every <laughs> studio I went, like, I gave tests. Like. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of yeah. you know, you mentioned that you did some VR stuff there. Um, is there any, is there any th different things you have to look out for for doing textures for a VR title? Mm, it's pretty much the same. Okay. But I think it's more... It's more technical, and it has to be more optimized. Okay. Because VR, everything is rendered two times, for one right. screen and for this screen. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you're rendering, like, 4K texture here, then in another, another monitor, it's 4K is rendered here, too. Yeah. That's too much, and you have so much environment and stuff. Yeah. So you have to be very careful about where and what, in what area you want to focus on, and does it worth it? Because it's got, it can right. bring the slow, it can slow the game down, mm -hmm. and then 
the person who's playing the game is like, it's, it's lagging. It takes yeah. all the fun. Yeah, and like low frame rate VR too can eventually yeah. make people sick if it's bad enough too. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, because I was curious, um, just because like with VR, like, yeah, on top of having to optimize mm -hmm. for for you know having to render everything twice, but like. The, um, there's also the fact that everything's first person, so like you can get way closer to everything. Yeah. So if there's like, you might have to pick and choose like which things I want to be way sharper if they're going to be looking close at it a lot. Yeah, that's true actually. Uh, I've experienced it. I, I've, well, I know what you're talking about like, exactly. Yeah. So it depends. Like they have their own rigs, but uh, and it depends what platform are you going to release on. Mm -hmm. So if you're releasing on like maybe. Uh, the new Facebook one, uh, Oculus, Oculus Quest. Yeah, the Quest. The, the where you no, uh, don't need any wires and stuff. Yeah, I think then you have to bring your resolutions, everything down. Yeah, but there are some like amusement parks where you carry your own computer on your back, and they have their own rigs, like two graphic cards, like yeah, that can handle anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it depends like where you're going, but the whole pipeline is like, almost same. Okay. And they are actually following what was happening 10 years ago, like the making textures. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't need normal maps. Sometimes you don't need, like, specular maps because huh. it takes memory. Right. So you only work with diffuse, and even diffuse is, like, the resolution is a little down. Like, they make it half, and when you go close, when you reach close to the asset, then it becomes bigger. So, uh, okay. Like, like games, but yeah, they try to be more efficient. Um, by the way, you brought it up. At the the start of the stream, uh, are you are you still into Half Life? Do you still are you still oh, yeah. into that series? Are you excited for Half Life, Alex? <laughs> yeah, I am. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually why I brought up that that thing because I remember just um, there uh, was a YouTube channel that basically got to test out the game in like every VR platform. I know. Uh, and then there was that a part where they were just showing like the, the your hands up way close and you have like a big glove oh. with like a PC b board and it was yeah. just like it was way sharper looking than I was imagining it to look like. Yeah, I think that is like an illusion. Because I think <laughs> they, what they were showing you from one monitor only. So maybe okay. it was a render on that monitor, and I'm playing the game in VR. Mm -hmm. But you can see the game in the mon on the monitor. Yeah. And they showed that. That's true. Yeah, because also, <laughs> like, uh, I guess, like, yeah, the VR headsets are rendering a different resolution, too. Yeah. So who knows if it's going to look like that sharp when you're actually looking at it in the game. Because yeah. there's, there's always a little bit of, like, a blur unless... I yeah. mean, they have... Valve has their own headset. Oh, it's, you know, the, it's a thousand dollars. It's like, oh, I'm gonna get that one because they made it like all the features for the game are like yeah. with that headset. It's like, oh, it's a thousand dollars. Uh oh. Oh, Valve Index is really gravy. It's really good. Yeah, I'm gonna get it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably will at some point too down the line because it's yeah. I, mean, I know it's expensive, but the, uh, like, the, you know the thing that like changed it for me was the finger tracking. Oh yeah. Like just knowing that, like just seeing how many like two hand, like just being all the things you can grab in that yeah. game so far, like it has oh, eighty seven sensors, man, in one in one hand, like in one controller. That's nuts. That's super cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I've tried there, and because I can't afford it right now, that time, I mean, but yeah. like you have to buy a really good computer too. <laughs> it's yeah, not like just one thousand. Yeah, that was the other issue. Is like I have a pretty good like gaming PC, but it's not yeah. good enough for VR, especially if it's a VR game that like is also a graphical powerhouse. Yeah. So but I'm just like, ooh, it's gonna be a lot of money. Wondering like, which graphic card do you have? Right now on my PC, I have a 1070, and it's I'm still like, better than me. <laughs> okay. I'm still using 980. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I had before that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I'm, and that game comes out soon, like yeah, two months. March twentieth, right? March twentieth, so basically two months, a little yeah. less than two months. Yeah, one and a half. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really crazy. Yeah, um, <laughs> I hope they don't delay. It or <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they said that they were like really far. Like they basically said like by the time like they announced it, they were yeah. nearly done with it, and they are done now. They're just kind of like polishing things up. Yeah. Which, Makes it sound. It, it feels like because there's been <laughs> such a big gap between Half Life games that they were like, yeah. let's not talk about this one until like we know, yeah, that it's coming out at this point. Uh, I mean, if it did a good delay, I would imagine it would probably be that yeah. one. I mean, like, I mean, a lot of games sense. get delayed, you know. Yeah, and it's their first like, like VR and their hardware. They're trying to sell their hardware too. Yeah, so it should perform. So even if they delay, I don't, 
I mean, I understand. Yeah. Take I mean, as much time as you want. <laughs> I, I, yeah, and also I feel like um, like there's some other games coming out almost around the same time. I was really looking forward to, and some of them got delayed just like a little bit. And, you know, yeah. Cyberpunk got delayed like a few, like six months or something like yeah. that. And like as a kid, I'm, I would imagine I'd be like, no, but now <laughs> I'm just like, okay. there are so many good games. It's yeah. just like maybe if they are Space Saddle. <laughs> no. I mean, are you playing any game right now? Uh, I was about to ask you that actually, oh. <laughs> uh, but I am playing. Um, I mean, we I streamed with Luis last week, Kingdom Hearts oh. three. I've been playing through that whole series because I've been meaning oh. to catch up on it, and I'm almost at three, I'm really close, like oh. a few hours away from that. So uh, that's the big thing I'm playing, Final Fantasy fourteen. Mm. Uh, I just got back into after like all the holidays happened last year, and I was just like I didn't have mm -hmm. the time to play an MMO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's basically all I'm playing right now. I'm kind of waiting, buying my time until the Final Fantasy VII remake comes oh, out. Oh yeah, uh, that's the like the big thing I'm looking forward to for this mm -hmm. first half of the year. But yeah, what have you been playing? I play most of the time I just play Dota. Okay, you're a Dota person. <laughs> yes. Okay, I, I think play a lot. I've played a lot of Dota. Nowadays, I'm not playing a lot, but mm -hmm. yeah, I think I'm playing Dota from 2007. Oh, wow, okay. Like, non-stop. Yeah. And when Dota 2 came out, then I switched to Dota 2. Mm -hmm. And then, like... But I, <laughs> now when I see the hours, bad thing on Steam is, like, when you go there, you can see how many hours you play. Oh, no, yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God. I should stop playing <laughs> I'm playing too much game, Too many games. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's funny. I actually think you're the first person we've had on stream who is like a big Dota person. And I know. I, I like. I like. Everyone. <laughs> I like expected like way more Dota answers just because I feel like a lot of people play Dota. Oh yeah. And like. Actually, yeah, but I don't think it's kind of difficult. Well, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's the thing. I've never been able to really play because like, I'm a person who likes playing complex games. But there was like a thing with Dota where it was like. Somebody from like when I was in college was like, okay, time to play Dota. I was mm -hmm. like, all right, I'm gonna do the tutorial. And they're like, no, no, no. You gotta play like a hundred hours of bot matches first. That's and Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> yeah. That's like generally the thing everyone says. I it's like, yeah, you that. should probably do like that much before you actually play against other people. I mean you can play, but you have to be like a thick skin. Like don't listen to anyone. Yeah, yeah. You can that's... mute everyone. <laughs> There's a good option. Like you can mute text, mute uh, mute their mic. Okay. Just do whatever you want to do. Yeah, because it's, I mean, I just know it's a very complex game. There's a lot to learn. There's a big meta game to it. And it's, yeah. if you just want to not immediately have a bad time online against all the people who are really good at <laughs> Dota have been playing it way longer than you, then you have to, like, practice alone a lot. Yeah, or you can practice with your friends. That's true. I can practice with my friends. Like, it's uh, not even a practice. It's just fun. I mean, it's not like... It's like, after 7 p.m., I'm going to play Dota two hours practice. <laughs> yeah. Because I have to join... Shashank's game <laughs> in March. <laughs> uh, I forget, aren't Dota games like about like an hour per match or so? 45 minutes? You know what? They added like a uh, turbo mode. Oh, really? So I play turbo mode. Which oh, is, nice. I used to hate it. Because like, this is not real Dota, this is cheating. You guys not going through the like pain of like, you know, <laughs> like farming and balancing everything. And jungling. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, uh, like last year or like two years ago, I think my friend was like, hey, Turbo is really cool. I said, okay, I'll try one day. So yeah. I tried, and you can farm so fast, and the game were ending like 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Wow. I was like, this is really cool. So it's like, just go, every, all the game is the same. Yeah. It's like when you kill a creep, usually you get like 20, 30 gold. Now you get like 80 gold. Okay, so, so it's just the gold. everything's just increased, resources are increased. Only essentially resource. just Only re Only resources. Okay. Uh, Nothing else. And that just... That alone just speeds the game up oh, that much. Oh, yeah. Wow. So you can just farm and get, get items and start. Like Then you don't have to worry about, like, uh, usually, you know, if you're a carry mm -hmm. or a support. So support cannot farm because mm -hmm. they have to help carry. But when you can farm so fast, so support are also farming in the jungle. Oh, jeez. And carry is yelling at the support, hey, help me out, man. <laughs> I'm like, no, handle yourself, I'm going to farm <laughs> Yeah. I did not know they added turbo mode. Maybe I'll actually have to give that a try sometime oh, yeah. if there's... Turbo mode I mean, I don't know. Turbo mode might make things more confusing at the start, though. 
it I mean, has gone it's faster. Like, it would be diff- difficult for you to like what people are, other people are doing. Other, yeah. Otherwise, like you can go and click on other people and see, oh, he's making this, and he's a support too, and I'm a okay. support too. I'm just going to follow his items. Okay. Because it's almost the same. Gotcha. But in Turbo, people sometimes just, you know, they don't care about supporting. So their spells are good, so they will just make like a funny build, mm-hmm. like funny items and stuff. And okay. And just bash <laughs> other people. Uh, but as- oh, yeah. Uh, aside from Dota, were you into like any other like competitive games, or is it just that? Uh, I used to play Counter Strike. Oh, uh, yours. One point six. <laughs> oh my God! You, uh, it's too bad uh, you didn't work here when our previous video editor used to work here because he was a big Counter Strike oh, and Starcraft person. Oh, I used to play Starcraft, Starcraft too, but I was really bad at it. Okay. <laughs> I played Warcraft three. Okay. Yeah. That remake just came out or whatever. Yeah. Uh, also, we uh, years ago, mm-hmm. I actually did a Counter Strike stream here. Nice. And I was not, um, like, I play first-person shooters, and mm-hmm. sometimes multiplayer first-person shooters, but I was never a person who really played much Counter-Strike. Mm-hmm. So, like, going into that and, like, I felt like I needed to drink, like, ten cans of Mountain Dew before I would have the reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, whip around and just headshot people. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, God, help me! Yeah, I think the reason we played Counter-Strike was Call of Duty in India. Like, I don't know what, everywhere, like... At least in my locality. Oh yeah, that was also something I wanted to ask for, yeah. like earlier in the start. Like what, what? Because um, I know there are some countries, like not all um, big name games will come there, or they have like sometimes it's like weird things where it's like uh, I forget what country it was, but it was essentially like oh, like there's one certain game platform that just isn't there at all because of like some weird tax law or something. Oh, uh, I forget what place it is, but I, I mean, don't think so. separately, like China, like until recently, like. They had big regulations on video games, mm. so like Nintendo couldn't even have consoles there. Or if they did, it was some weird off, wow. like off-brand that. thing called like the IQ or something like that. I forget. No, <laughs> but uh, I mean, do you, in India, did you essentially get like every I mainline think, yeah. release there? Okay, I think yeah, there's no restriction like that as far as I know. Mm-hmm. I I only know one person who used to have V. Okay, I don't know anyone else. Like all of my friends were like all PC gamers. Okay. Not even Xbox or PS. Huh. Was it just like your your g- group of friends or is it like was I, PC more popular there? I think PC was popular because like no one wants to buy their kids Xbox or PS4. Really? <laughs> it was very expensive in India. Oh, okay. So yeah. PC at least you can do multiple stuff like you know. Right. So PS4 or PS2 or PS3. My brother, my cousin got it mm-hmm. but we played like first few months then you have to buy like all the new games too. So we used to play Tekken. Yeah. So Tekken was really big in India. Super duper. Really? Yeah, Tekken huh. was really big. Interesting. Tekken was really big, and Street Fighter, we used to go to, like, arcades. This is, like, mid-90s or right. late-90s. Yeah. But Tekken was big till, like, as far... It's still big, I think. It's like, you slowly, like, you know, you start playing Counter-Strike, and people you play with play Tekken with, they don't play Counter-Strike, so they're like, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it happens... Yeah, cause that's, that's interesting to know, because I do know that, like, I've noticed this thing where, like, there's um, different countries have different preferences, at yeah. least when it comes to fighting games. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, the, um, I think. what is it called? Which fighting game? Street like, Fighter? Not Street Fighter. Uh, um, the Neo Geo one. Uh, Fatal Fury. I think I've seen people playing it okay. in arcades and stuff, and even Kings of Fighter. King of Fighters, something? Oh, yeah, King of Fighters is what I'm thinking of, oh, actually. King Fatal of Fury turned into King of Fighters. But, oh, okay. Because, uh, like, I know King of Fighters is, like, really popular. Not here in America, but, oh, yeah. like, in South America and stuff, like, it's way bigger there. Y- yeah. In, uh, yeah, not that big. Like, yeah. we, in every arcade, you'll find Street Fighter, mm-hmm. King of Fighter, okay. and Street Fighter. Okay. And sometimes Tekken. But then, more like the 2000s, you see Tekken everywhere. Okay. Street Fighter is always there. Mm-hmm. King of Fighter was slowly fading away. But I was never good at King of Fighter or Street Fighter. I used <laughs> to Tekken? go Tekken. Okay. I played Tekken a lot. But Street of Street Fighter and King of Fighter, I will try to learn so much. I spent so much money on it, and someone will come, and I'm just going crazy, and he will come to. And I'm just in the air. Yeah. Or I'm just on the ground. Yeah. 
That's funny because I'm the opposite. Like I've played Tekken multiple times and I've never been able to get it to click for myself. Oh. It's, I think it's just because I played Street Fighter first and that's Maybe, I'm yeah. used to fighting games working like that. And Tekken yeah. like, Tekken's moves come out in different ways slow. than Street Fighter. Yeah. Compared to Street Fighter, so yeah. I just have a hard time like linking moves together. Like I can pull yeah. out one move, but I uh-huh. can't link it into another. And I'm just like, yeah. oh no. Yeah, I kind of do that too. I'm, just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the bear and I'm getting destroyed. Yeah. No, there. It's like Taken 6, I, I, I have to play Taken 7, like, with someone, because I have it, I bought it, I didn't yeah. install it. So huh. right now I'm just collecting all the old games, like Nostalgia thing, like yeah. Age of Empires, Warcraft, Half-Life, Blue Shift, Okay. all the old games I can find, what I used to play, mm-hmm. like Roller Coaster Tycoon. Oh, you, you that's a good it? one. Yes, <laughs> I played that as a kid, for sure. Yeah. Um... Sorry, I'm just checking the audio really quick here. Um, yeah, I guess one more question before uh, we, we wrap up here. That is, um, you know, you've only been here for about a month, but oh, yeah. h- how is Volition? What's it, what's it like? It's amazing, yeah. No, I, I was looking, like, like, Volition in my list is one of the studio. Like, I wanted to work. It's like a checklist thing. I mm. have to come here. Like, Descent, when I came to, you know, Descent, what, Volition made Descent? Mm-hmm. I, so I, was t- I was talking to my brother, I said, you remember the first game you played? First 3D game, which 3D game did you play? Yeah. I was like, oh, uh, Wolf? Wolf? Wolfenstein? I was like, no, 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 other one. Oh, the spaceship one. <laughs> like, yeah, that game. Yeah, they made that, this game. And I, like, luckily I got it. Yeah. So I was like, really cool. But the weather and everything, everyone was saying it's going to be, like, pretty cold, this and that. I'm liking it, actually. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, I mean, it's... I feel like this winter's been a little more mild than usual. That's like, what I heard. Everyone's saying that. I yeah. Like, yeah. Let me enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, not a lot of snow, thankfully. Yeah. Sometimes we get a lot, but it's not... I'm from Michigan, which oh, is just yeah. a little bit more north than, Cham- than Champaign is here. Yeah. And, like, the winters are way worse. They're, like... Oh. <clears throat> really quick... A few years ago, like, before I moved out here to work at Volition, mm-hmm. uh, we had, like, a cold snap in Michigan. It's like, and we had, like, a warning, like, don't go outside unless you really need to because you will, like, screw your lungs up and maybe die oh, because it was 40 below zero Fahrenheit. Wow. That's the temperature of the right. surface of Mars. And I looked it up. <laughs> it's, it's Fahrenheit, right? Yeah, Fahrenheit. Wow. It was, like, you went outside and took one breath, and, like, you could feel your nostrils and your lungs freeze up a little bit. I, I was feeling that here. When I <laughs> really? On the first day. <laughs> when it was, like, 20 degrees out or whatever? <laughs> it, yeah, it was yeah. minus one. I was like, oh. oh, it was minus one, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, thankfully it hasn't been that cold yeah. a ton recently. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, thanks for being on. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for I showing really off the, 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 all the yeah. texture work stuff. I've been really yeah. curious about that, especially just... When you showed how, like, you looped that stuff, I was just like, oh, that makes, that seems, like, not that hard, actually. Because for some reason, I was just always imagining, like, yeah. if you, like, hand-painted, like, a texture, that would be really hard to make it, unless... Oh, yeah. But it just makes sense to just... Layering, layering. Yeah, layering, copying one side to the other. Yeah. yeah. Although I guess it, it's probably a bit of a... a um, the skill probably comes from doing that in a way where you can't see it repeat easily. Yeah, that's the whole purpose. So yeah. it's, like... Everything is terrible. Now people try to say, like, it, it shouldn't look like a software made it. Right. So it shouldn't look procedural. Right. So you have to break it by just putting extra mask and the texture. Sometimes you see in a game, like, you can see the pattern. And it's like, oh, they use that mask. Yeah. Because your eyes are so trained, like, to spot that, th- uh, spot that thing that y- it shouldn't be <coughs> showing up. But Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, thanks for being on. No, thank you very um, much. And thanks, thank everybody, uh, for watching. Uh, if this is your first time watching the stream or you just haven't uh, been around for a little bit, uh, all of our previous streams are archived on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash volitiontube. Um, and we stream every week on Thursdays, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. Um, and, yeah, in the future, we're going to have some more dev talks. Uh, we'll probably break that up by playing something really dumb, some dumb <laughs> multiplayer game or something. Uh, I just thought of one we played for one of our very first streams ever years ago, and I wonder if I mm-hmm. should bring it back. I don't know. I'll think about that later. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, again, I'm Josh yeah. Stinson, the video editor here at Volition, and on the couch mm-hmm. today we had... Shashank, thank you. And, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next week.